nothing. There's nothing. This is. Uh... And again, we're losing Geraldo as soon as we get him back. Uh, of course, this happens. He is right in the thick of the storm. And. Uh, uh, satellite signal going in and out. Again, uh, Geraldo's in Melbourne, Florida. Let's go to a little map just so we can show everybody, all of you at home, give you a sense of sort of where Geraldo is. He's in Melbourne, Florida. And uh, we're told that the, uh, that the uh, hurricane, uh, rather, excuse me, he's in Riviera Beach. Forgive me. We've got so many correspondents up and down the coastline. But Geraldo's in Riviera Beach, which is very close uh, to Stewart, Florida, which is exactly where this hurricane hit landfall. And again, it just crossed uh, our wires here that it hit landfall about six minutes ago. Uh, so Geraldo, no doubt his signal is coming in and out because he is right in the thick of it. Some of the latest numbers, in fact, uh, we're seeing now, it's also crossing the wire, that uh, Francis, some of the winds may have been even a little more ferocious than they had expected. They thought they were going to max out at about 105 miles an hour uh, when it hit the state of Florida. But now we're seeing that at some points it looks like it went to about 115 miles an hour wind. Of course, uh, some of the other effects, uh, shredding roofs. We saw some windows blowing blown out literally live on our air and also uh, uprooting trees, just extensive damage. And of course, the big concern is the rain coming down, the storm surge. Uh, massive flooding is expected, as you can see, as this hurricane just hits across the state of Florida. And again, hitting landfall just a few moments ago at uh, 1 a.m. Eastern time, just eight minutes ago. Let's go to our uh, affiliate, if we could, WOFL, WOFL in Orlando, uh, but they're in Melbourne, where they have the live shot, where, of course, again, is getting pounded. Let's listen in. It's literally, when you turn around a 180 degree angle here, you can see the horizontal rain and the palm trees just blowing with that rain. There's clearly a line. When I step, when I step, yeah, oh man. When I step here, I'm fine. Five steps, I'm in that 105 mile per hour wind. And frankly, it's not very comfortable, so I'll come back here. Yeah, you know, I find it amazing. The sustained winds right now that we're reporting are basically running about 70 there. So, uh, again, you're getting gusts of what, about 90 is what we're reading right now with the Doppler radar. It feels like 90, it, it, particularly when you, you can feel 90 on your, on your face. Wow. Excuse me for a second here. It's not always calm next to the building here, as you can see. It comes whipping around. Um, you know, one guy around here was saying there's, there's going to be a shift in the wind. What do you think about that, Glenn? Is that possible? Uh, very possible. Again, you're on the northern eye wall right now. Again, the uh, center officially moved ashore at 1 o'clock uh, in the morning just nine minutes ago. The uh, center of Hurricane Francis moved ashore. So you are getting a stiff easterly wind, northeasterly wind, and uh, really in about, but it's going to take a while, in about another uh, six to seven more hours. And that's what you have to deal with, that wind velocity, that wind uh, direction. Uh, you are going to have a southerly wind that is okay. going to be just as strong. And, and that's where you get a lot of damage. So do we need to rechange or change our position or are we going to be okay here? Uh, I would say you're good for now. Again, what's going to help you out is the slow movement. Remember, it's now moving at seven miles per hour. New updated advisory. It's moving at seven miles per hour, the forward speed. And again, we're dealing with the uh, eye that's about 50 miles across. So again, we're dealing wow. with still with about, you got about six hours. I hate okay. to tell you that, but you got six more hours <laughs> of what you have outside right now. Then the wind is going to change direction. That's when you're going to need to reposition your satellite. Okay, we'll have to do that then. I can tell you that six hours, it, it goes by very quickly out here. Maybe because we're alone and we're just hanging out in the wind. But before you know it, it's, it's mid-morning. I can tell you that there are a few hotel rooms in Melbourne that are available, and we've considered going to them. But, uh, whoa, there goes my hat. Hang on one second. Not the, not the uh, first time I've lost my hat tonight. Um, we've, we've considered going to the hotels, but we're afraid to move the trucks. We're afraid to drive because the debris is flying around. The stoplights are crashing down, and, uh, and pieces of signs and roofing are flying around. It's just not safe to be in a vehicle. We'd, we're better, better off hunkered down. I know it's an overused term, but we're better off staying put, if you will than trying to navigate the city streets right now. If the cops aren't doing it, we don't need to be doing it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I hear you on that. Again, uh, one thing, of course, also, when you have a tropical system, we, we lived through this, of course, three weeks ago with Charlie. A lot of people would say they saw lots of lightning, strange-looking lightning. It's not lightning, okay. is it? No. 
No, those are those, right, those transformers are blowing. It looks like lightning. It just lights up the sky. It's, it's actually kind of neat looking, but that's clearly a bad sign for the days to come. That means power is going to be out for a while. We certainly know that from Charlie. Yeah, the, uh, the, again, the estimated winds, again, blowing between 70 and 80 miles per hour. Again, here's a live picture on radar. We've been tracking this as it moved to shore. Again, it moved officially onshore at 1 a.m. It's now 1.12 exactly. And uh, again, the eye is now moving to the northwest. Good news, want to tell you, it has accelerated. Get ready for this forward speed. You ready? Yeah. Seven miles per hour. One more time. It's now moving at seven miles per hour. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. So it's really picking up speed, isn't it? I tell you what, we're happy about that. The faster, the better through here. You know, I got some people asking about Satellite Beach. Can you tell us a bit about Satellite Beach? Uh, Satellite Beach. Uh, Satellite Beach is up to your north. They're just now beginning to pick up some of the strong winds you had probably about a half hour, 45 minutes ago. That's now. It's north. Uh, there you see the yellow. You see north of the eye. It's Satellite Beach is a little north of there. So again, this thing is expanding out. And again, that is the core. That's the eye wall, the northern eye wall, as it now moves ashore. So uh, unfortunately or fortunately, you guys are in just the right spot to pick up the strongest wind. So uh, it's, wow. it, it's going to keep going. It, and again, as we uh, figure out the distance here, you know, it's scary to say with Charlie, we had the strongest winds blowing at about 30, maybe 45 minutes when people would, would hunker down in their safe rooms. For this one, you still have about six to seven more hours worth of this kind of wind. Well, let me ask you this question, Glenn. Uh, the folks and in, you've been uh, listening live to our local affiliate WOFL. The reporter there losing his hat uh, in the midst of some very, very heavy winds. They're on that outer band because he's in Melbourne, Florida, which is about 76 miles. We're told uh, the actual where the where the uh, hurricane hit the uh, Stewart, Florida. The actual location is 76 miles south of Melbourne. So about an hour south is actually where it made landfall. And he's on that outer band where the winds are just whipping. Uh, uh, knocking off his hat and again residents without power we're told two million residents throughout the state of Florida without power tonight we will continue our coverage of Hurricane Francis which has now hit land just about 13 minutes ago and we're getting a visitor behind me too here comes the tide it's about 20 yards behind me now and I'm guessing in the next half hour or so it's going to be all the way up to where we stand now the tide is coming can we go to the mass cam this is the shot from a camera that's mounted on top of our live van. There's two things I want to point out to you. One, that you can see the tide is moving in. It's getting closer to the street behind us. It's getting closer to us. And secondly, I'm sure you can see that that camera is bouncing. The camera is mounted on a mast that's probably right now about 20 feet in the air. It has the capabilities of going 50 feet in the air. They wouldn't put it up that high in a, in a wind gust like this, or they might lose the mast and lose the camera. But that's the bounce in the, in the, uh, in the live van. And I referenced it about an hour ago. I told you we were sitting in the van and we felt the van rocking back and forth. That's the image that you see because with that mast up in the air, that's keeping that van rocking pretty good. But the, the um, tide is fastly approaching. As I say, it's about uh, 20 yards behind us or so now. And when we felt like we had a lull a little while ago, it feels like it's picked up again. The rain is coming hard again. It's coming, it's falling from the sky as well as being blown by the wind. Can you get a shot of the parking lot? Is that possible, Alex? the parking lot where our cars in our in our live van are parked. Wow, it's really coming now. It's really coming at us now. This is about as hard, right Alex, about as hard as I think that the wind has blown all night. Oh man. Tom Johnson, any any explanations for this that uh that, that we know of. And you've been listening well, to live coverage from our local affiliate there, WSBN. Wild and woolly weather all up and down the state of Florida where the landfall has occurred of Hurricane Francis just about half an hour ago, getting still some ferocious winds, pounding rain. You can see the winds are just whipping their maximum sustained winds of 105 miles an hour. And we'll have a live update from the Fox Weather Center when we come back. Geraldo Rivera, who's live at Riviera Beach a little bit further south uh, and closer indeed to where the eye of the storm hit. Geraldo, what are you experiencing? Rita, it's still a mess. And uh... in the ferocity of this. 
Yeah, we're uh, losing a little bit of uh, contact with Geraldo. We'll see if we can get him back up in a second. Again, Geraldo is really right in the thick of it all. Uh, just to give you a little bit of sense, you can see where the eye of the hurricane is crossing, and that's pretty close, just uh, I think it's about 10 or 20 miles or so from where Geraldo is in Riviera Beach. I understand we got Geraldo back up. Uh, Geraldo, obviously, you're just taking a beating out there. I, I really, this whole region is, Reed. I'll speak fast because I don't know how dependable this signal is. Just to give you a, a, a quick tour of the area, from Jupiter, uh, we, we, we started down there, Jupiter Inlet, and a tour we took, the ocean just crashing in, most of it deserted, condos, all these uh, oceanfront condos, very luxurious, all of them shuttered, shut down, mandatory evacuation on all the barrier islands. Uh, down closer to where I am here, Singer Island, the same story a ghost town, a, a luxury ghost town. Uh, cops were on the causeway, now they're not. There's no one out now. Uh, just uh, some, some foolish Fox correspondents. Uh, coming around to Riviera Beach, again, uh, deserted. Uh, traffic lights torn off the wires, electrical cables strewn everywhere. Uh, Water, water everywhere, and and uh, and no one knows where it's all going to go. And this is all said and done. Uh, the 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 blow that this hurricane is uh, it's a it's it's a pounding. It's almost it's like uh, this uh, Florida. This part of Florida is like Ali in that rumble in the jungle. It's uh, and George Foreman is pounding, pounding, pounding because it's been absolutely relentless. Uh, and and. and when you hear the meteorologists say that it's going to last another 24, 36, 48 hours, my goodness, uh, the emotional toll that this is going to take on, uh, on the emergency services workers, on the cops, on all of those families that are huddled in, the, uh, uh, in those shelters, and all of them, you know, with strangers and worrying about Fido and uh, Rin Tin Tin back home because these shelters don't take pets. Uh, you know, this is, and, and, and then worrying what they left behind. The mayor telling me, you know, uh, when we had him on live during the 10 or 11 o'clock hour, I forget all the hours have kind of melded together, the 13th hour that we've been out here, uh, roofs blowing off. What, the, what light, what dawn will bring in terms of a, an appreciation of what Francis has done to, uh, to this part of Florida, now, I can only imagine. It's going to be incalculable. Now, if, uh, if Charlie did what Charlie did in the, in the hours that it was savaging that area around Captiva, Fort Myers, Sanibel, I, I can't imagine when all is said and done what the toll of Francis will be. Now it's taking these giant clotting steps uh, across this, uh, this, part of, this part of the Florida Peninsula. And, uh, you know, what, what it's going to leave in its wake, I can't imagine. I mean, if there are any uh, agricultural uh, products that are still on the, on the tree or the vine or whatever it is, I can't imagine that they won't be stripped clean. Uh, to restore power, I, I don't even know where they're going to begin. I, I, I tell you, Rita, there were, there were scarcely a block that I didn't see power cables that were lying in the street. And remember, I've been in this location now for about four, five, or six hours, so I have not been out there actually since it got dark. So I can only imagine, because the storm is exactly the same as it was then, just the wind has come from the opposite direction. So anyone who was spared when they were in the leeward side uh, of the early part of the storm is now getting the windward side now that the storm is coming ashore with that lumbering, uh, ponderous kind of forward movement. Hopefully, uh, the storm will not intensify as the back end of it now draws some energy from the Gulf Stream out there, and the land perhaps uh, saps some of its strength. But uh, I, I, it's, it's, it's just to, 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 to tell you, look at the rain is now coming west-northwest. It's coming horizontal to the, to the deck. It's, uh, it's going to be a mess. And as good as the Florida Emergency Services people and the first responders have been, and the magnificent volunteers from the Red Cross and those other agencies, the toll uh, in terms of, uh, I mentioned emotion, but just the physical exhaustion, uh, you know, pe people, the disorienting impact of this, it's just like the world is turned on its head. Uh, everything that was normal is not now. This is the, anyway, Rita, I'm starting to ramble. Let me throw it back to you.
All right, no, Geraldo, stay safe, my friend. And just to give you a sense of where it did hit landfall from Geraldo, uh, it hit in Stewart, Florida, and I'm told that uh, you are 35 miles south of Stewart. So um, he is uh, very, very close. And, of course, the most ferocious thing, I think, when you deal with these hurricanes, as Geraldo and I have both covered many of them over the years, is that outer band of wind. And Geraldo is just getting a beating from that outer band of wind. And, again, as we've been hearing from the Fox Weather Center, 48 hours. And as quickly as it comes, it's starting to kind of relax again. So I, I suppose this is going to be the norm for the rest of the evening. But um, the winds are definitely starting to pick up a little. Um, I'm kind of, uh, you can't see my feet, but if you spread them out far enough, I'm shorter now than I've ever been, but at least it gives me a, a little bit of grounding so that I can stand here and kind of give you an idea of what we have. I think we might be able to kind of pan off just a little bit into the Daytona Beach area. We're just a little bit east of A1A, so you can still see that we have uh, mostly power over here in the Daytona Beach area. Still I mean 8,000 people, though, in the county that do not have power. Palm trees are whipping around. We've been watching a couple of them tonight. They seem to be leaning a little bit more than ever. But uh, we're pretty protected as far as our van and our uh, photographer, Drew, is uh, very uh, well protected uh, next to a hotel that's about, uh, I'm looking up three stories. So for the most part, this area hasn't had a lot of damage. We have seen some debris this evening, but uh, really just now getting our first taste of uh, the rain and a little more of the wind that we haven't had this evening. Reporting live from Daytona Beach, uh, back down here, I'm Beth Sherman, Fox 35 News. And you've been listening to Beth Sherman as you hear from our local affiliate, WOFL, as we're looking at still some pretty dramatic pictures of Hurricane Francis. Uh, she's a little north of where that band, which is the most severe winds, uh, which are coming through now, still clocked at all. I'm wondering what the very powerful, uh, yet only a Category 2 hurricane, believe it or not, uh, still coming through, lumbering through uh, because of the pounding winds, because of the pounding rain. And in fact, a lot of people are saying that's what makes this so tough, is that uh, this has just been pounding this area already for many, many hours. In fact, uh, before it came here, it was in the Bahamas, where it lumbered over the Bahamas uh, for about 24 to 48 hours. And now it is just lumbering, slowly assaulting the Florida coastline. Let's go back, if we could, to WOS. Elba, where they have some pretty dramatic reporting. Um, this is Orlando Stations, the Fox affiliate, uh, right in the thick of it all. Let's listen in. Maybe having to uh, take care of some last minute uh, checks around the house. I wouldn't call it a breeze, but uh, it's, uh, it's definitely Mother's Nature uh, letting us know that uh, the storm is coming to, the, to really the world's most famous beach, a beach that has had its fair share of storms in seeing one three weeks ago and in seeing a couple in 1999, Floyd and Irene, and of course Donna for all of those uh, Central Floridians that have lived here for quite some time. Um, we'd like to see probably no more storms for the rest of the year, but we've got to deal with this one tonight, so we're going to keep you abreast of everything that's going on in Volusia County. As we get more information, we'll be bringing it to you. Beth, we see some windows and so forth boarded up. Does that appear to be helping with those heavy winds there? Yeah, I believe so. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting because I was uh, walking around one day talking to a businessman. He was boarding up his business. You know, a lot of these people, this obviously is their livelihood. And I said, you know, what are two of these businesses aren't boarding up? And he said, you know what, I, I don't think they really care. And, you know, not that anybody would really want their business destroyed, but it's interesting to see how many people who have been here for so long care so much about their their business. It, it really is an awesome beach when you look at how long and you're looking at live coverage there from Daytona Beach, just a little bit north of where the band of severe winds keep pounding Hurricane Francis and our continuing coverage right after the shore break.